Welcome to our video tutorial on layers and dimensions. Here we will be covering how to set up different layer schedules to display different portions of a job and how to modify the automatic dimensions displayed around walls and assemblies in different views. For this presentation I'll be using Cabinet Vision Solid 11 Build 168. Layers. What are they? Layers are used to control what you see in different views in Solid. Layers are overlays on which you organize and group different drawing information. Solid Essential and Standard customers have just a one layer schedule on which they can edit. Advanced and Ultimate users have the ability to set up multiple layer schedules. Layers do not control what is actually in the job. They only control what you can see on the screen and which details are sent through to the drawing scenes. Which layers shown are unique to each view, so that a plan view of the whole room can be made to display different details to that of a plan view of the isolated assembly or the plan view when drawing bench tops for instance. To make changes to the layer setup, go to the view of which you are wanting to make the change. Right click on the background and select properties. Go to the layers tab and then you'll be presented with a list of layers in which you can modify. The light bulb icon controls whether this layer becomes visible from this view and the pencil determines if the layer will be displayed in a scene when sent into drawing. You can toggle these on and off by simply clicking on the icon. If you click on the line, you can then choose from a selection of line styles and you can also change the thickness of the line from the drop down menu below. You also have the option to change the layer's color by clicking on the colored square selecting the color you want to change it to, hitting OK. An example of this is if we are in benchtop view, I would like to easily differentiate the benchtop from the base assemblies. So I change the countertop layer to red and make it three points thick. We may want to see the walls and base assemblies in order to make sure our benchtop is covering the correct area, but we don't want to see them come through to the drawing scene or only after the benchtop outline. So I'll make the pencil icon next to the walls and base assemblies grey. And when we send to drawing, we only receive the outline. Back in the layers tab, we can also adjust the layers with bold text further by double clicking on them. For hardware, we can show or hide certain categories. For shop annotations, you can change which way you want to draw your hinge arrows and if you want your shelf outline to display or not. You also have the option to display dimensions on cabinet opening widths and heights. And if you're using the face frame construction method, you can also display the rails and style sizes too. You can modify the text in which it uses to show the dimensions through the font button. Under master operations, you can change the color which is displayed. And annotations allow you to display object names and numbers or small labels and noting end types. Under annotations in plan view, here you can show your wall labels. And lastly, dimensions, which we will go over in depth shortly. We also have an advanced button leading to a few more options. All the options in the two drawing area determine what follows through to scenes created when sent into drawing. Ticking the template box will make any scenes gain a label, noting which view it was made from. Force drawing to black will convert all layers color to black. We have an option to include wall hatching or not. Checked for overlap lines will remove lines that are stacked on top of each other though turning this option on will greatly increase sending to drawing time, so unless it is important to you, it's best left unticked. Check for intersecting surfaces displays on or off, like this example. Hide concealed lines would hide things like hardware and shelf details, like displayed. This option is only available in elevation. Assembly outline shows the boundary of the assembly, not the parts within it. With it turned on, you can also choose how you want it to display the door swings. 
top outline only toggles between seeing the top's build up components or just the outline of the top's boundary. Show simple doors which is only available in section view of the cabinet toggles between seeing door route profiles or not. Curved tessellation does as per example. Show axis indicator appears your X, Y and Z in the corner of the page. You can also change the background colour of the current view if you wish. Within section view, we also have the option to hatch case or internal parts. For advanced and ultimate users, you can access layer schedules by clicking on the small layer icon under the view category of the toolbar. Here you can create new layer schedules or modify existing layer schedules by selecting a schedule from the list and hitting the edit button. Upon editing one of the schedules, you now see that there is many categories and subcategories on the left. Each view containing its own unique layer setup. Essentially, this is looking at the layer setup from all the different views in the one place. If you make a change to one of the parent categories, the changes will follow through to all the subcategories provided that you have not already changed the same layer manually, in that case it would be held as an override. You will see this as I change the colour of the walls in the general layout. And it follows through to all the subcategories as well. You can also transfer layer configurations across different schedules by right clicking on the category you wish to transfer and then selecting which schedule you wish to apply the same properties to. Now I'll explain how to customize the automatic dimensions. First let's get to our dimension layer editor by heading to the view you are wanting to modify, right clicking on the background, going to properties, layers tab, and then scrolling down and double clicking on dimensions. The appearance of the dimensions is controlled by which style is selected from the drop down list. Though which dimensions you are to display is done through editing the dimension lines. Line offset controls how far away the first dimension is from the object. The increment is how far the preceding lines will be distanced from each other. Tail dimensions will shoot out a line at each break and show object depth will display the assembly's depth from elevation view. Dimension lines allow you to control which dimensions automatically appear in solid. You can control the list of lines by highlighting the one you want to modify and using the buttons on the right. Each line in the list here will represent a line of dimensions. The order of the lines in the list determine which dimension appears first. You can rearrange the order by selecting the line and moving it up and down the list with the move up and down buttons. When editing one of the lines, you will be presented with another window where we can again rename the line up the top here. We can choose which objects we want to dimension between by ticking the boxes on and off. As you do, you will see the preview window update. The force dimension line tick box forces the line to appear, sometimes necessary if the dimensions are not displaying because the drawing is lacking an object it's referencing. This most commonly would be used on a dimension line for a total wall length and height. The type of line, which is different per view. In elevation view, the line lets you control if you want the dimensions appearing on the top, bottom, left or right of the elevation. Within plan view, you have the dimension type wall, which aligns the dimensions along the back of the wall for measuring lengths and widths. Wall end being perpendicular to the wall for measuring depth. And island countertops for measuring island tops. Giving an example of setting up elevation dimension lines from scratch, displaying the wall, cabinet and benchtop height, also the wall and assembly width, creating a new line, calling it wall height left, editing it, making sure the type is set to left, and I've got wall ends only selected, and I'm going to force the dimension line so that it appears even though it's referencing no active objects. Making another new line, Calling it wall lanes top, setting the type to top, and only having wall ends selected. Also forcing the dimension line to always appear. Making another line we call the upper width top, changing the type to top, selecting our wall ends and our upper assembly ends. Making another line called base width bottom, changing the type to bottom, 
and we want wall ends and assembly ends selected. Lastly, dimensioning the assembly's height, we can create a line called assembly heights left, making sure the type is left, and the objects ticked are wall ends, both the assembly top and bottoms, our toe height, and our countertop surface and countertop bottom. We now see our dimensions for our wall height and lengths are the inside dimension, which I'll move to the outside by placing them lower in the list by selecting it and using the move down button. And I'll also increase the vertical line increment a bit. Last thing to cover is the dimension styles. Styles are a way to be able to change the size, layout, font, the fit, or the type of arrows of your dimensions. There is a list of preset styles from the drop down menu to select from, or you can make or edit your own by clicking on the three dots here. This will bring up the dimension style editing window. Here you have the option to make new styles or modify an existing style. When editing the style, you will see the preview window change to give an example of the changes you're making and any testing of new styles is best to be done to a copy so that the original stays unmodified. When editing the style, we will see all the ways in which we can make a change. Line turns extension lines on or off. Fixed scale allows or prevents some dimension properties from being scaled when in the drawing scene. If your dimensions are way too large in the drawing page, your style is probably set to fixed and needs to be changed. Under lines and arrows, you can control the line width, tick lengths, the offset between the tail and the object, also the type of arrow you are to use. Under text, you can change the text size, font and positioning within the dimension. For hide text, if set to yes, it will remove the text when it can't fit between the dimension lines. If set to no, it will move it outside the dimension lines. And hide arrow will remove the arrowhead when it cannot entirely fit within the dimension. This concludes our tutorial for layers and dimensions. Make sure to check out our other tutorials for cabinet vision. Thank you for watching.